I am going to show you how I turn this into this. Hello fiber friends and welcome to another spinning tutorial Tuesday. I'm Evie and my channel is Jillian Eve. I upload a new tutorial every Tuesday so I hope that you will subscribe and come back for more tutorials. I am going to do this video in two parts. The first part is going to be preparing and then spinning the fiber. And the second part is going to be plying and then finishing the yarn. So let's spend just a moment to talk about this malabrigo. Nube in Spanish means cloud. This is malabrigo nube because it is as soft as if you just reached up to touch a cloud. <laughs> I originally went to my local yarn shop to get some Malabrigo because I wanted to make the perky little hat. This pattern is a pattern that you can find and purchase on Ravelry. I saw it, it was adorable. I've always wanted to have a hat with the bulky yarn and so I needed Malabrigo to do this. And it is called Rasta. That is the yarn that I used for this hat. I will put a link for the pattern if you would like to look it up and try it out yourself. So while I was at the yarn store, they had a bowl with a couple of rovings and I just could not help myself. And this has happened to many spinners. I know I'm not the only one because the colors are absolutely gorgeous and you touch it and it is just the softest thing ever. And you think, oh, I must spin this magical unicorn fur. And I've already done these two. So you can see right now what this final yarn is going to look like. And as I said, this will be a two part video. The way that I have chosen to ply this yarn is a three ply in a Navajo ply or chain ply style. And the reason for that is because it keeps these colors together. It does have a slightly barber pole effect in it. However, the tones of the color tend to stay together. And so you can see that um, where it has three together, they're not the exact same shade, but they are all in this, in this kind of maroonish range sort of a lavender or pink or beige, but they're all in the same range. And and so while it does make sort of a variegated effect, it's not as striped or barber pulled as it would be if it was done as a two ply and the color variations were just randomly put together. The reason I'm going over this right now is because the way that you want your finished yarn to look depends on how you set up your fiber to spin in the beginning not fabric scissors because I'm not a monster. I did pay $15 for each of these bundles, four ounces of fiber. And let's see, was there any other information on here? It just says four ounces, 100% pure merino, hand dyed. So here we go. Now, they're a little notorious <laughs> among the spinning community. And there are two main reasons why. One reason is because when we open this up, you will see that the colors do not necessarily go all the way through the roving. Here's some purple, some dark, rich purple, but if we peek in here underneath, that purple doesn't go all the way through. There's some white fibers showing up. So the color has not been fully 100% saturated. When we know that going in to the project, we can prepare for that. The colors that you see on this roving as they are all bundled up are not necessarily going to be 100% all the way through. Just be aware that it will fade out the colors a smidge. And then the other surprise is that whatever dyeing process this goes through, I believe it is kettle dyed, it compacts and it can become a smidge felted. It has some bits over here that appear to be a little felted so we'll have to deal with that as they come to the spinning wheel. I will probably end up um, spinning what I can off of here and maybe pulling that off and just skipping that part of the spin. But they're a little bit known for having very compacted um, 
fibers that can be difficult to draft. And so that is something to know up front. And if it's too compressed, too compacted, you can end up damaging the fiber trying to pull it apart to draft it. And that's no good. So these have uh, so far been great for spinning. Like I said, with this one, there was just that one spot, but it is something to be aware of, something to watch out for. And I think I forgot to mention before, the colorway that we're looking at here is piedras, which I believe means stones. I'm just kind of picturing some beautiful glimmering stones under a babbling stream to get this colorway and I could definitely definitely get that image in my head from looking at these colors so on the label it does call this a roving however having spun this I can tell you that it presents itself very much like a top so what I mean by that is in a carding situation the fibers are all different directions and they end up a jumble like this if my fingers are if my fingers are the fibers they end up a jumble like this and so when they spin they kind of get pulled together like this but they're going all different directions in a combed top in a true comb top, you would have all of the fibers the same way, even as far as the tip of the fiber and the cut end of the fiber facing the same direction. So at the very least, we have fibers that are much more laid out in a more organized fashion. It does split very, very easily if you find sort of those natural splitting uh, points. So let's look for our first spot. Now, before I get too far, I want to make sure that I am spinning all of it in the same direction. So whichever end I start my spinning from is the next end that I want to start my spinning from, if that makes sense. So if I have my roving like this and I split it into four parts, I want to start each spin from the same direction. So I'm going to put a very loose, very, very loose overhand knot on each of these because that way I know which end I started from and I won't get confused and I am easily confused so this is an important step for me all right let's just continue all the way down here's that little felted bit that I will deal with well it's drafting a little bit actually as I'm splitting this hmm, maybe Okay, so I'm just gonna do that and keep these sections together. And keep on going, split, 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 all the way down. There we are. <laughs> and it is split. Now I'm going to take this section and split it again. Now the more times that you split up the fiber, the more times you will shrink the length of the color as you spin. Because if you have more material, let's take this purple for an example, if I have a thicker portion that I'm spinning from, there's more material to spin that's purple, which makes a longer section of purple in my yarn. So the more times you split it, the shorter the sections of color become. So again, that's just something to keep in mind when you think about how you want your final yarn to look. So while this label says roving, to me, this fiber feels much more like a top, which means that the fibers are aligned in the same direction. Top is typically spun with a worsted style of spinning, which would be a short draw. Now you can have a short forward draw or a short backward draw. And I found that while they're both techniques for worsted yarn, a short backward draw does give the final yarn a little bit more of loft. 
it has a little bit more air in it. It's not as compressed down in the process of spinning. You'll see what I mean in just a moment. And so my final yarn tends to be squishier. So it has a little bit more of that woolen feel to it, which I like. And that's what I want this yarn to be because it's so soft. I want it to also have the squish. I don't want it to feel soft, but then also have that density or that heaviness that a worsted yarn can have. If you have questions, ask me in the comments below. Preparations of fiber, drafting of fiber, literal textbooks have been written about these things. So I think that uh, the best way to look at it is what works for the fiber I'm working with right now. And for me, that's a short backward draw. But let's look at both. I will show you a short forward draw, and then I will show you what I'm doing for this yarn, which is a short backward draw. I am spinning on my vintage Ashford Traditional. I have it set up as a single drive, so I am using my Scotch Tension for this spin. Hand it sock alert. So I can feel the pull, but I'm fully in control of being able to pull it back out from the wheel. And that is about where I want my tension to be. This is called a short forward draw. That is when you take a pinch of fiber just from the tip here and pull it forward and then you let the twist come up and you take another pinch and you pull it forward and then you slide your pinched fingers so that the twist travels up the section that you just pinched off. The short forward draw is sometimes also called the inchworm technique. It does feel very much like you are inchworming along. Okay, so let me show you that again a little closer. So I'm just taking, um, my fiber supply hand is staying in the same place and I'm just pinching off a little of the fiber right at the front, right at this spot, right here where it's becoming yarn. This is the threshold, yarn, not yarn. <laughs> and that is right where I just take a little pinch and pull, slide, pinch, pull, slide, pinch, pull, slide, pinch, pull, slide. Pinch, pull, slide. Okay, now this will create a consistent, dense, and smooth yarn. This is a worsted spinning technique. But I want my yarn to be just a little floofier. So to achieve that, what I'm going to do is a short backward draw. So I'm going to keep that pinch spot so I'm pulling my fiber supply hand backwards, then letting the twist come up. So I'm pulling with this hand backwards, and that's what's creating a backward draw. Then I'm sliding. I just give a little backwards pull and then slide. Backwards pull and then slide. And it is just a little fluffier when the twist comes in as opposed to pulling forward and then sliding where it feels almost as if there's a little bit of tension here when i pull it forward there's a little bit more tension keeping everything more compact when i pull this back then there's not tension here when I slide it to give it the twist. I recommend playing around with both styles and seeing which one works for you. I tend to have a more consistent yarn when I do a short forward draw, um, but I tend to have a fluffier yarn when I do a short backwards draw. If you look at the bobbin as it spins, you can see how the different colors are being a little muted by the white that is coming through underneath, and yet they're also sort of sticking together in their own color sections. And that's why the chain plying at the end is going to be very effective in preventing a very um, barber pulley look to the, to the final yarn. I'm spinning right along here and I'm about to come to this felted portion. Uh, the first thing I will try, of course, is to draft it and use it. The second thing I will do, if that's not possible, is to remove it. <laughs> If you can't spin it, you can't spin it, and no one needs that kind of negativity in their yarn. All right, so this is the portion where things are starting to fall apart. Okay, 
It's drafting back here. This section doesn't want anything to do with my yarn. <laughs> this section here is, nope. All right, so this is what we're going to do here. We're going to break it all sad. I'm gonna pull some of it back out, this section, which is nice and floofy, and we'll continue with that. So to join this on, I will bring it up next to the section that was already spun until it grabs on. And then I'll bring them together and we have a join and now we keep drafting. Just like that. And this section I have no trouble. It was near that felted sticky bit, but um, this section is fine. I'm having no trouble. So if, if, it's, if it's just this small amount, I'm okay with that personally. I can put it to the side. If the whole entire roving was that way, it wouldn't work for spinning. It does have to be able to draft. If you've been following my Instagram, you have seen the pictures that I have been posting over the past few days of this spin. It's really been fun. It's just gorgeous, gorgeous fiber. Malabrigo is really known for their colors and I've enjoyed playing with these colors so much. Make sure that you're subscribed with those notifications turned on so that you won't miss the next tutorial. Happy spinning!